Hey guys, we're doing another species spotlight today. This is actually going to be our first amphibian species spotlight. We don't have too, too many of them here at Jay-Z's Reptiles, but we're going to show off a little bit because we're giving them a bigger little enclosure because they're starting to get bigger and they're going to outgrow what they're currently in. So we're just going to show it off really quick and we're going to talk a little bit about them. So what that is today is tomato frogs. Tomato frogs are really cool. Uh, cute little amphibians. I say they're little, they actually get pretty big. They'll get kind of like this once they get to full grown size. Uh, they come from Madagascar. They're called tomato frogs pretty, for a pretty obvious reason. I'm going to show you ours here in just a second. I just don't want to pick them up a whole lot because amphibians will absorb oils and stuff through their skin, which includes the oils that we have on our hands. And we don't want to harm them in any way because that can cause them harm. They have very porous, sensitive skin. You don't want to handle them really any salamander a whole lot. These guys don't have like the most sensitive skin in the world, but I don't want to handle them a whole lot. So I just wash my hands and I'll pick them up for a little bit just for kind of a nice close up visual. And then that's it. And then we're going to put them back and we're going to leave them alone. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this setup. I'm not going to, like I said before, I don't want to do a whole lot of care guides and stuff like that because there's a lot of really good places out there. Um, and I think I said it before, if you're subscribing and watching my stuff, you're probably subscribing to some other people who do a little bit more in-depth care sheets and things like that and have a lot more experience and knowledge than I do about a lot of different species. If you have any actual, like, you know, specific questions or comments, um, let me know. You can message me and I'll let you know about that or I can uh, give you to somebody who I know is a good trusted source. But so these guys, they come from Madagascar. They're not nearly as imported, heavily imported as they once were, but they are getting more popular. Um, I think they're starting to do a little bit more captive breeding stuff, but eh, not 100% sure. Um, but I kind of got away from there where I was going to talk a little bit about this. So these guys, they do get pretty big, so they need a decent sized footprint. So this is just a 18 by 18 by 24. Uh, this is a Zoomed, I think. Uh, we were given this cage so, uh, because this didn't have a lid. So if you wanted to keep any sort of lizard or snake or climbing amphibian, they could easily get out of this. And so we just kind of did this kind of like ghetto rig thing with a screen from like a screen door and we adhered it to this top here. So it's not the most secure if you're wanting to put anything like a snake or a lizard or a gecko in here, but these guys don't climb, they burrow down. So that's why we're gonna utilize this exact enclosure for these guys, because I don't have to worry about anything going on this. And then once, even once I put it into the gecko amphibian room, um, we're gonna put something on the top to kind of hold in the humidity a little bit. Still have enough room to breathe, but we're gonna put this in so it's gonna hold hold humidity even better than what the current setup is, and on and so forth. So these vines are really just mostly for aesthetic. I have caught them climbing a little bit on the on the foam background that they were in in their previous enclosure when they were still little. Um, but since they've gotten to about this size, I haven't seen them climb at all, so I'm not really worried about them climbing up these things. It's really just more for aesthetic for me. Um, this is going to be a full file, uh, a full bioactive setup once it's all set and done. So I don't know if we can see it super well. We have the false bottom here made with like the clay balls. You can do a bunch of other stuff. And I'm going to do a full bioactive video uh, later down the road with someone who knows a whole lot more than me. And I have something really cool in mind, but we'll get to that when we get there. And you have that little meat, the little uh, thing in between. It's just it's a different type of mesh. It's not metal, but it's another type of mesh that separates the false bottom from the actual stuff. And then the substrate that we have in here is a mix of uh, reptile or jungle soil, which is a mix of a bunch of different stuff, as well as a really cool product from uh, a company called BioDude, who I would say, I mean, uh, there, there's a couple bioactive uh, and like substrate type companies out there right now, but I really like BioDude stuff. Um, we used all of his products when we did the bioactive setup for our green tree python. And so this is a mix of that because we had a little leftover and this jungle soil and we put a little other, a couple other things in there. It's mixed up with like peat and carbon and, and topsoil and stuff like that. It's all mixed together, which makes a really nice, healthy breathing substrate. And then we have a layer of sphagnum moss and then some leaves on here. All of that is a nice, big, thick substrate layer because these guys do like to bury down. And so enough about just my setup. We're going to actually sit here and look at some of these frogs. So here is why they are called tomato frogs. And come here, little guy. I know, I know. So I'm not going to handle them a whole, whole lot. So here we have, this is why they call them a tomato frog. There's a couple different subspecies um, between like, they call them true tomato frogs. And I think they're called false tomato frogs. But whoop, see, 
They, they're still frogs. They still jump around. Um, they get to a pretty good size. These guys are probably about half grown. Um, they were in one of the small little exoterras before, so clearly they were getting way too big. And now that we have plenty of extra time, we are going to do this little setup for them like that. Um, nothing, nothing too crazy about these guys. They're really cute. They're not really like chirping guys. They like to croak a little bit. You can, they have kind of like a low, like a low, uh, a low, a low pitch croak, I should say. Um, they are strictly nocturnal, so they don't necessarily need UVB or full spectrum lighting, but nothing is bad about it. Um, I would expect that if you were to put UVB on them, they would probably be buried away during the time, a lot of the time when they did have UVB out, and then at night they would come out. Um, as far as temps and stuff, you want to keep them a little bit on the cooler side, like probably no higher than like 82 or so, and then no cooler than like the low 70s. Otherwise, you're going to get into something that's going to be, you know, dangerous for them one way or the other. Uh, always make sure you're giving them like, a nice, adequate water source. I have that small little bowl in the back right now in the corner. Um, we're going to get a larger one, uh, you know, when when we have more opportunity, when I feel a little bit more comfortable being out and about, um, you know, shopping one, because I would much rather go to like a local reptile store and support the hobby that way than even going online and buying from Amazon or something like that. Um, but either way, uh, these tomato frogs are really cute. They're, you know, they're fair. They've been around for a long time, but in the past two or three years, they've gotten very, very popular. And I see why they're pretty low, easy maintenance as far as amphibians go, especially like if you do the kind of bioactive or very naturalistic setup, um, it costs a little bit more money than just kind of like a basic setup, nice, like just on like Eco Earth or something like that. But once it's set up, it's kind of, uh, it, it's kind of like an automated machine. Like once you get the machine set up, it's good to go. And these guys do really, really well. Um, they're pretty low maintenance. I would say these are a really good uh, intro or beginner amphibian in general. Hopefully you guys can look forward to some more amphibian videos if you're interested in that. I know people have asked about frogs. So here's our first frog video, the Madagascar tomato frog. They're pretty cool. I like them. They're cute little buggers. I hope you guys like this video. Please like and subscribe if you can. As always, hit that bell. It really helps us out if you do. That way YouTube actually notices that we exist and that helps me out, which helps these guys out too. And it helps out the whole reptile community as a whole because we want to perpetuate good solid information versus just kind of hearsay. Uh, hope you guys are having the best time that you can during times like this. Uh, like I said before, we're going to do a lot of videos right now because we just have the time. Um, hope you like them all. Let me know if you have any ideas about videos, ways that you can improve these or anything specific that you want to see. Um, more than willing to listen to those things, do them up if they're good, visible things, and I'll certainly talk with you about that. Uh, once again, hope you like this video, hope you guys are doing okay, and I'll catch you next time.